context is a really important part of the way that I come to artwork now. My father's an incredible maker. He could pull anything apart. He was always building things and making things. So he had this kind of very maverick approach to life. He was quite anarchistic. He was anti-government. He was anti anything that was going to try and put a corral around him. My mother was very hard working. She went from Italy, you know, as a young person in her early 20s, went by herself to England. She became a nurse. She didn't even speak English. And she used to always be collecting twigs and sticks and gathering things up. And when I went back to Italy, I just saw all these big piles of perfectly stacked timbers and perfectly stacked twigs and, you know, sticks and things like that. And I just sort of really saw in that moment how influenced she was by her, the context in which she lived in. So I think collectively, both of them really passionate about what they did. I feel like those attributes have really jumped into me in a strong way. We came out when I was six years old, I think, and um, sort of experienced a few of the different states, Sydney and in New South Wales, Queensland, and then they ended up settling in Perth. There's memories of living on top of a doctor's surgery in Sydney. I was sort of really connected to um, the creatures on this planet. And I think it started then having, like I had this little guinea pig called Polly and two little chickens. Um, and they were kind of everything. And my mother used to come home, she'd find like, droppings from the creatures in the lounge room and I would get in trouble for that but it was like I didn't mind because it, you know these were really my friends and you know that was my sort of major interaction while nobody was around. Grade five my parents bought this little battle axe block in Wembley Downs. There was these kind of large expanses along the coastline and the sand dunes and I think it started really forming my ideas about sort of context and its impact. I felt like I didn't belong anywhere. It was a, a quite a um, strong sense of I'm a, just a visitor, I'm a visitor and that stayed with me for a, a long time. When I was at high school there was never one time where anyone said you can make a, a life from this. You can make a profession from this. Who we studied at art school was these tragics, like people that cut their ears off, you know, in the name of art. For the first time in my life, I was exposed to artists um, that were dedicating their whole life to their art practice. It was really showing me that this was a, this was plausible and possible. So there were, there were a lot of individuals that inspired me during that time, a lot. I went from being quite classical, I loved the human form and I was pretty good at it. But then what started to happen, and I think that this was quite pivotal, is this, this again, you know, this, con this connection that I even talked about as a child and being on those sort of bleached sand banks of the coast and having to make up your own stuff because it was just so bare. I started working in landscape. I go out to the salt lakes and do work out there and it was like really nobody was ever going to see it. I started being quite fascinated by the drive-by experience because Perth we're just always in our vehicles and I saw all these trees that they'd pulled up on the side of the road and it sort of gave me this idea that I worked on for quite a few years. Cocoons as metaphors of like transmigration and eco-migration. And so, so I was regrafting nature back onto these trees that had been severed. So I'd sort of um, sculpturally intervened and gave them their bodies back again. So I think that way before the public art thing started to rise up, this was the thing that I was really interested in. How do I, how do I inform 
a context. Mm-hmm.